G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is James, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. Today, I'm gonna put my timer back on for 40 minutes. I did this a few weeks ago, I think, uh, or recently, I feel like, in my brain, I don't know. Who knows, it's the 14th of January, June, April, May. <laughs> I have no idea when I did this. I think, I feel like it was quite recent. I'm gonna put the timer on for 40 minutes and just sit here and chat with you. Uh, or chat to you, I guess. Um, please feel free to respond to the screen um, or in the comments below. I'm gonna go through uh, a couple of these journals because this is what I've been working on in my virtual voyage, but my real goal for today is to open this. I have not even opened it yet. I saved it especially for the video. Um, this is the Kuretake Ganzai Tambi, uh, water, it's not really watercolor, uh, Ganzai is the, the paint, but it's, um, it's like a watercolor set. It's not watercolor though. Don't call it that. <laughs> People get very mad in the uh, in the YouTube comment sections if you call it watercolor. It's technically not uh, the same makeup as watercolor. Watercolor is um, it's pigment plus the binder is usually like a gum arabic or uh, the, the, there's types of binders that are watercolor, but this is also produced with uh, kind of a glue from animal hide. That's what makes it different from watercolor. There's a bunch of um, different things that go into the binder with the pigment. So. It's uh, traditionally made for like the Japanese sumie kind of paintings, but I'm gonna use it like watercolor today. <laughs> I, uh, I was watching someone use it and I thought, you know what? It's got a really flat lay of uh, color when I was looking at it. It kind of looked really nice and flat. I don't know, I'm gonna get to this anyway. Um, what I thought it would be great for is, um, I'm a hoarder of these art supplies, so just check that box off. But I wanted to have something that was like watercolor, but just laid down flat so I could do quick coloring. Um, I like my watercolors, but I spent a lot of time curating a set of watercolors that is, is very unique, like a lot of pigmentation um, properties are different in each of these watercolors. Some granulate, some are multi-pigment, um, these iridescent and these metallic ones. Like, there's a lot going on in this set that doesn't make it great for rendering something uh, just kind of flat, which I guess I don't really need to do that often, but I've decided all of a sudden I might want to try it. <laughs> So, uh, cracked out the company credit card and bought this set of paints. I got them off Amazon, uh, I don't remember how much they were, I think, I don't even remember what size set this is, does it say? Oh, it says 48 colours. There you go. 48 colours set. We'll look at it in a second. Um, I'm gonna set the timer so that I, I don't run over, but that's what I'm doing today. I'll probably be drawing some mermaids in one of my journals and painting them. Just in case you want to leave now, if that sounds boring to you. Me chatting and me doing that at the same time. <laughs> Alright, time to start for 40 minutes. Here we go. So, how are you doing? How are you? How have you been? I've been lovely. I've been working on the virtual voyage. You haven't heard about that. It's uh, kind of a four-week experience online. It's like a it's like a workshop meets a content offering experience, but there's a live component to it, so we go through it all at once. Um, together and each week is themed differently. We go to different ports of inspiration. There's an overarching theme of it being about cruise ships because I used to be a dancer on cruise ships and it's just, uh, it seemed like it would fit and it, to be honest, two weeks in, it really does work. The, um, the concept, like it fits, the structure fits within this random cruise theme concept, but it is, uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. We've done the first week was down the rabbit hole. So we were doing lots of inspiration pulling from um, Alice in Wonderland. Second week is Fathoms Below, that's the week that we're currently in. So this is uh, The Little Mermaid, or any kind of tales under the sea. I'm saying The Little Mermaid, but um, I'm quite liberal with <laughs> my interpretations. And uh, the next week we're doing Avant Garden, which is a look at fashion illustration, using Christian Dior as a bit of an inspiration. And the last week is Over the Rainbow and that's The Wizard of Oz. So I'm doing different signatures for each of mine. I think a lot of us are doing this. This is a, a US letter size journal. I've just hand bound these signatures. There's only three pages, which once folded over and all is said and done, um, you've got 10 pages in the inside to work on, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and then a front cover and a back cover. But since these are all gonna be signatures inside of a bigger journal, I think uh, you could safely say that that'll get you 12 pages to work on, but I'm still doing front cover, back cover, I don't know why, I just didn't give that up. So this is uh, some of the look, uh, some of a look at what we've been doing, there's lots of lessons, sometimes I'll jump on live and just do a bit of a hangout, a live on the Lido deck hangout, uh, where I just go through my process. The other night I was using references to um, show how I map 
bodies out, which was, um, people that were at that, that shared, shared such incredible work, I was actually truly blown away. Uh, so if you are a part of the Virtual Voyage and you haven't watched that replay, um, I'm assuming people found some great success with it only because I saw it with my very own eyes. Um, I won't say much more about it, but yeah, that was really fun. These are just a lot of the lessons from, um, down the rabbit hole. I didn't end up finishing some of mine, like this page here I totally didn't finish and I'm not going to finish it today. Um, I can keep working on these, there's no need for this to be done at the end of the week. I had hoped I would get things done by the end of the week, but there's just like, there's a lot going on in Virtual Voyage <laughs> and as per usual I have um, overcommitted myself to everything. <laughs> you know what I'm like. Uh, and this is my Fathoms Below one. This was a um, fun little collage moment. We did these brush stroke mermaids with the tapered strokes, love that. Um, a bit of collage, this was the photo references. So Steve and I went and did a photo shoot. I actually have some behind the scenes footage. I'll put it up here, I'll put a little screen up as well. Um, we did a photo shoot building a set of reference images to draw from and that's what I've been having fun doing more recently. These are some of them here. Uh, and I used inspiration from the Neverland mermaids. Uh, at Mermaid Lagoon, Disney's Peter Pan, the animated classic. I absolutely love. See, this is what I mean. It wasn't technically the Little Mermaid. <laughs> um, I, I pulled, I pulled out of that for a second just to go to my uh, my classic Neverland Mermaid inspiration. It's one of my favorite all-time scenes in a movie. I just absolutely love it. And so we had uh, Janae and Sarah here do a set of reference images for anyone in the course to either print out and use, like I've done here, or just use them straight from the website. Um, I even did pulled some into Procreate and drew over the top of them. Uh, and it's just a, a tool, another tool for drawing. A lot of the course is about, sorry this is not to sell it to you, but I'm trying to explain what all of this is. Um, a lot of the course is about uh, how I use all of these skills and techniques to uh, to learn as I go, but to also be in the process of art journaling as I'm learning. And uh, so I'll leave a lot of this stuff in here as it is. Like the, the learning itself is documented. And then you can uh, actually come up with these fantastic results. And then when we're in live classes, we end up doing lots of fun stuff where we do have a, um, like a finished piece. You end up learning by doing, which is my favorite way of learning, rather than learning all the theory beforehand and then trying to apply it. Um, there's a lot of self-study components too. I like people to uh, kind of manage how much they want to get out of a certain amount of things. But the live, the live class, um, un unless you're just sitting there not doing anything, um, we do go through it together and you do end up with something finished or relatively finished. Um, so this was that. And I like to kind of explore different styles that I'm enjoying or that I have enjoyed before or that I think would be beneficial just to teach because, um, yeah, there's a million and one things you can do in art and in art journaling. So why not explore all of it and have the most fun you can have with all of it? Honestly, I could keep, I, each week I've done, I say so far, um, this is the second week. Last week, I could have made itself, it could have been a whole year long. Like the inspiration, especially once people start sharing on social media, there is a hashtag, hashtag JLB virtual voyage on Instagram. Like once people start sharing, the ideas just generate new ideas. And it's, it's like, it's unbelievable. It's exponential, the amount of ideas that keep growing. And so I feel kind of guilty moving on to the next subject. <laughs> like, I feel like people were just getting into uh, the Alice in Wonderland and then I, I segued straight into this one. But one week really, I mean, it is enough to get everyone excited and in there and doing everything I think anyway. Um, but I am possibly thinking about different versions of this for the future and uh, either shorter versions or more intense versions. I'm not quite sure. I'm still loving it the way it is right now. This signature seems like it's on track to be finished by the end of this week, I believe. Sorry, I'm just gonna check them in frame. I'm a little high, there you go. Um, this, this seems like it'll be finished by the end of the week, I think. It seems like it will be. And if it's not, it's fine. But once I'm done with all these signatures, I should have four, um, possibly five if I wanna include, oh, I've got a couple that I do demos in. Um, I don't know, I should have a bunch of signatures and I can put them all together and bind them into one bigger journal, like a whole journal where all of this is just one book. And then I can keep my whole virtual voyage experience together. Anyway, I don't need this one. I need this one. I'm gonna draw some mermaids and I'm gonna get into this paint. I actually wanna get into it now. Cause I've been waiting. It's huge. I don't know where I'm gonna store it. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? 
This, um, I'm assuming they want you to swatch it out on there. To me, this is a little flimsy, and I'm not quite sure if it even is watercolour paper. It might be really thin watercolour paper. Um, some of the, this one's cracked. I don't think that's the end of the world, because they're going to stay in here. Some of them look like they've got, um, hair in them. Uh, people have asked before, like, why why have them like this? Why not store them like watercolour? Because the style of painting with these, the Sumiya painting, is um, is meant for those big Japanese calligraphy brushes. I haven't got one that's not ruined here. This one has had glue on it, but imagine this were a real calligraphy brush. <laughs> um, it's so that you can fit your brush inside the pans and uh, and be able to pick up all that paint. Otherwise, I mean, trying to fit a brush like this into a tiny little half pan is just... It's doable, but you will pick up about nine colours at the same time. So that is why they're made like this. And like I said, it's not watercolour in the sense that the makeup of, like the chemical makeup of it is different. And there are animal glues in this. So if you're vegan, you're not going to enjoy this. Um, but it is, yeah. And this is um, carmine, which I believe does, is made of the carmine pigment. So this is very not vegan. Um... That's not something that I look for in art supplies, but just worth mentioning, because I think some people um, forget that art supplies themselves can be uh, vegan or not vegan. I know people are against kind of uh, animal hide journal covers and uh, real, um, what's it called? This is synthetic, but I believe it's synthetic. I'm sure it is. Uh, the animal hair bristles in brushes. There are lots of different art supplies that... Uh, you know, aren't vegan friendly. This is definitely not one of them. I'm gonna spritz them with water just to get them activated. I have a gold pan of this, and I do have the Japanesque colors, which I think are a hybrid and are made with like ink, I wanna say. I could be lying. I didn't do my research about that one. Um, but they're really beautiful dark colors, and they've got a tint to them. There's like a, a bluish. A bluish dark colour. I'll get them out. Hang on. I wonder if they're Kuritake as well. I'm sure they are. Here is... No, I don't know the brand, actually. These are very much the same. Can you see? It says greenish black, bluish black, purplish black, brownish black. Yeah, they and they really are dark. They're nice. I do use those. Let's get rid of that. Oh, this chair is going to drive me nuts. But I have zero plans to get the WD-40, so it is my own fault. Let's open up the page I want to draw on. I've got so much space over here, I think I can draw mermaids. I'm going to check that I'm in frame again. Set up the camera all wonky. To me. I hope it's straight for you. But it's a little wonky for me. Okay. Now that I've been chatting, I've only got half an hour left. So. Is that good? Great. Let's just draw some mermaids. I don't need to have these be anything special. Oh, Steve's home. Because I'm just going to paint them. So I'm going to try and pull a bit of reference from what I did last night. I think it was last night. On the Live at the Lido Deck hangout. I was using the references to draw the mermaids and map the bodies on. And we did like a 50s kind of looking face, which I really like. So I'm going to put that on here, and then I guess because I have these here, I might as well use one of these references here. This probably won't make sense to you if you don't know what I'm doing, but just pretend I'm drawing a skeleton and then I'm going to draw <laughs> everything uh, on top. I'm using this reference here. I'm trying, um, this is such a random segue, but in Virtual Voyage, because there is, it is a workshop as well, like you're supposed to learn things um, if you want to, you don't have to, it's not a rule. But I'm trying to kind of add lessons that uh, demystify some of the things we assume are really, really difficult. Um, just because there's just a lot of steps to them, or we haven't tried them, or 
Um, every time you go and watch a video about it, someone says, well, like, you won't get it until you put in hours and hours of work. Um, I mean, yes, hours of work and practice is good. But there's no reason why you can't try it. And so I've really been trying to demystify some of the more difficult things that even I myself spent ages not trying because I thought, oh, I just won't have any success with this because I'm, I'm not committed to practicing. I want to have fun. I don't want to sit down and draw for, you know, nine hours before I can even get somewhere. So I spend a lot of my time formulating the lessons so that I can uh, keep that in mind. And that's why I like to have lots of finished products to to show at the end of our live lessons or at the end of the little tutorials. I like to show my own work so that uh, people have a reference, but I also like people to have their work um, be finished to some degree so that you can really see that you, you, don't, you don't need millions of hours to start. It'll help make you better or more confident. But it really did shock me. Ooh, what is that? A police or ambulance? Sorry, I don't know if you can hear that. Probably, it's so loud. Oh, it's a fire rescue. <laughs> Doesn't look like one of the, um, one of the regular ones. It's a tiny little truck. Maybe it rescues cats in trees. But I don't know why they'd have their siren on for that. Where was my thought process? <laughs> I'm so relaxed right now. I've got a um, I've got a fun day planned later today. I have art journaling the magic Zoom call, which is nice because I get to uh, be the student today. I can switch my brain off for a little bit. Um, I'm planning for tomorrow's live stream theme night, which is King Triton's concert. Well, I think it's just called Triton's concert. I forgot what we called it, but we're doing that, which is fun. I've got my outfit ready for that and it's wild. <laughs> We've been dressing up for our theme night. <laughs> we figured if it was good enough for Australians to get dressed up to go to the mailbox, it was good enough, uh, not the mailbox, to take the bins out, it was good enough for us to get dressed up for our Zoom calls. But there were some fabulous costumes last week at the Mad Tea Party. I think I was talking about having finished examples. Yeah, I like, I like, I just like there to be something uh, manageable and achievable to have at the end of your process, so that you come away at the end of it having having actually achieved something, and not with the thought of like, now I have a thousand more hours of practice to put in. Because some of us, I mean, a lot of us aren't looking to become professional illustrators or professional anything we're we're just having fun and we're just looking for new ways to have fun and my tastes change all the time sometimes this is fun for me sometimes mapping all out and using photo references and challenging myself to draw different styles that's fun and then other times i want to do this grid and i want to do like the actual um like i want to scale this up and and practice getting this consistent look between these like that's fun i feel accomplished when i do it it feels like a sense of achievement um, and then other days it's fun just to throw uh, paint and water at a page and then just leave it. But all of these activities, um, you know, that's, that's how I like to have fun, but everyone has fun different ways, so I try to mix it up. But ultimately always lean into whatever I'm having the most fun with, <laughs> selfishly. I just think it's easier uh, for everyone if I'm not trying to force myself to like something I don't like. So that is why I'm doing mermaids this week. <laughs> it's been a hot minute since mermaid. My um, my my passion for mermaids has come back after my brief hiatus. It always happens after mermaids. It's, it's quite an intense. It's quite an intense thing to sit with for a little while. Just everyday mermaids. I'm gonna put eyes on her because I feel like I keep drawing them with their eyes closed. Might be a little dark, might be a little Tim Burton-y. It's fine. She won't be 50s anymore. So yeah, that's Virtual Voyage. Other than that, we had a restock in the Etsy store. 
and we uh, released new washi tapes and that new cutie pie stamp set, which I'm excited about. Steve's going to have a massive <laughs> weekend of shipping ahead of him, so hopefully he's ready for that. Oh, do you know what? I might do some hair out this way. And swoop a big bang over the top, aerial style. There we go. So thank you to everyone that was there at that, um, that purchased from the store. We'll have those out to you as soon as, well, Steve will. <laughs> I've really, really encouraged Steve just to take that job away from me. <laughs> Sometimes I really enjoy the, um, the mindlessness of, of shipping and packing orders. But when I've got a lot to do, like, um, like all this... Uh, content offerings for Virtual Voyage and then making sure that I'm still uploading to YouTube and um, answering lots of questions and emails and like there's just a ton going on. Um, I find myself not enjoying the monotony of it so much and more resenting it. I know that's terrible to say, it's just honest. But I do always remind myself that it is the best problem to have, to have too many orders to ship. That it becomes boring and that there was a time when I told myself that's I would do anything for that problem so don't whinge and be grateful that's what I tell myself <laughs> or rather um, the little voice that occupies a space in my head that sounds like my mother tells me that <laughs> I'm sure you all have your own version of those voices <laughs> that's good though a bit of accountability keep everyone grateful and humble all right, I think we've drawn our mermaid and she looks fabulous. Gorgina. Now I want to paint and I think I'm gonna to have to try and put a lot of these colors in the tail because I was <laughs> I was going to use um, every color in here but I don't even know if I'll be able to make that work. Let's just see. So my goal when I'm getting a new art supply is to use it the way I think I'm going to use it Oh wow, it's kind of opaque. Um, and me getting a feel for it, the way I want to use it, is going to give me the best idea of how to move forward with that product. Um, I know people like to watch a lot of reviews. I always take reviews with a grain of salt. A, if people are being sponsored. Not that I have a problem with sponsored videos. Um, you know, you always have to agree that, that even if people aren't saying nice things about the, the product, there's still always an incentive to say something nice about it. Um, you rarely see someone getting paid for a review that absolutely states their 100% candid, honest opinion. Um, myself included. I just, I just think your headspace is different when you're testing it and you're, you know, you're working it out and you're thinking, like, well, is there a redeeming quality? Like, if I had to find one, like, you're more likely to mention that rather than if you bought it yourself and you think, oh, this is crap. <laughs> Like, everyone told me I would like this, and I don't. It doesn't do any of the things it said it does. But also, I, I mean, I think my ideas about consumerism has changed since I moved to America. Because I, I never used to return anything. It, like, didn't even cross my mind that you could return things like food at a restaurant. I mean, I still don't. But I guess what I'm saying is <laughs> having... Um, now that I own my business and I ship out products all the time and I have to deal with the cost of the uh, customer resolution on the other end, um, I've had to learn to accept and adopt a lot of that consumer culture. And so my thoughts about everything has kind of changed. I've, I've no, I'm not so gracious if a product touts itself as one thing and doesn't perform that way. And, um, like, whereas before I would kind of say, oh, yeah, it's just a bit of a miss for me. Now I might be fully inclined to return it or to um, give it a bad review. Whereas I feel like in the past I never used to be like that. I mean, I haven't hit the, day, the stage of giving a Yelp review for anything yet, but who knows? It might just be around the corner. <laughs> but in general, I do try to find things I like about everything. And I've said before, if... She's gonna have sunset hair. I've said before, if you um, like, if you get something and it doesn't really work the way you thought it would, it, it can be disappointing, but it doesn't mean it's a bad product for everything. Like a lot of the time when I have um, white 
paint pens or white pens, I think, oh, it's not super opaque, which is hard, right? It's really hard to get a super opaque white. Um, there are other uses for it. Like, there are lots of times in my mixed media where I only want a sheer kind of glaze of white over it, like a transparent layer to kind of dull something or uh, slightly pop something out a little bit or kind of merge something together. Even in the eyes, like maybe I just want to kind of glaze over something and I don't want a stark, stark white. Um, so, you know, then I become grateful that I do have a few things that aren't as opaque as I thought they would be. I think you can find a way to love them if you want to. If you don't want to, it's kind of a lost cause, but I love this color. Yep. This was one of the colors I saw online that made me want to get it, because I don't have anything like this that's so transparent and so vibrant. When I saw that online, I said, I need that. <laughs> I didn't need it. I really wanted it. I'm just mixing everything together to see what it does. It has that um, kind of feeling of when you're using dye-based inks. There's that patterning and pulling, or the um, the cauliflowering, even when you mix these um, colors together. And it has that vibrancy of a dye-based ink. I'm not quite sure because it's not dry yet. This looks like it's dulling down as it dries a bit, but it does have that same feeling. But I, I like how flat it is. I can still manipulate that watercolor texture by adding water. Like I'll always add in little drops of clean water if I want to manipulate some texture somewhere. So I might try that in a few places. But some of these pans are really, really dark. I can't actually tell what color they are. Oh, that's pretty. It's really nice. What's that called? I guess if you're going to buy some of these single, I don't know why you would, but if you did, um, the colors I'm loving so far, I believe this is called Malachite. And then it's two over from that, three across. What's that? Turquoise Green Deep. Or turquoise. That's really pretty, that color. I'm not mad at this little pink, too. It's kind of difficult to get... Uh, light pinks and baby blues in watercolor. I got some from Japan last year from a little hundred year old store called Gekoso, but I'm running kind of low. Well, the tubes are empty actually, so I'm on my last half pans of those. So the I think these will be a nice replacement for that because these are quite transparent, in my opinion anyway for a pastel color. I guess I should make all those stipulations. They're not transparent at all, but the way I want them to be, it'll work. And that's the thing too, we all work differently too. Sometimes a, a, a product working um, perfectly is, is not what you need. Sometimes you'll, you'll find something else to do with it that is more you than whatever that product promised to be. So I think that's kind of the reason why people tell you to play with everything a lot and really give it time. And it's it's why I find it hard to review things anymore because every time I would give reviews, a lot of people would get really mad if I hadn't, um, if I hadn't noticed something, which I understand. Um, and I guess that's why I always stipulated that, or stated, is that even the right word? I always stated that it was a first impression, which I didn't do this time. This is my first impression. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you saw that since I, um, I only cut off the plastic when I started the video. But when you're doing your first impressions, you really don't know what's going on. Anything could be happening. And maybe you've, um, maybe you even used it wrong, or maybe it was a really hot day and it was affecting something. Like if you're using watercolor, maybe it was a really humid day and it just wasn't drying properly. I don't know. There could be a million reasons, but people tend to get very upset if you haven't, if you haven't found the workaround that they've found. Um, I personally don't. I'm just thankful if someone does find one and they share it on YouTube. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of over that drama, to be honest, of being reviewed for the review. <laughs> Because I can't know it. I mean, I did one once where I did a, a Chic Sparrow unboxing, and I think I'd used it for a long time before I gave it a review. Like, by the time I had made the video, I had been using it for a while. And I feel like that was better. 
because I could actually uh, integrate it into my routine. There have been things that I've said before, I, I just got this and I really like it, um, but then I don't use it again for months. And so it's hard and I, I feel like expressing my opinions, I forget that some people are gonna go and buy it because you said that. So I, I have to remind myself. But I don't think I'm doing a great job of selling these to you, so hopefully no one's tempted to buy these, <laughs> unless you were already thinking about it. But I think they're totally going to work for what I wanted them for, and I really like that they're really vibrant. What's this colour? Ultramarine Pale. Oh, that's nice, it's like a periwinkle. Beautiful. Don't even know what's going on with this rainbow fantasy now. What's this one? Oh, that's like an indigo. Oh, it is. I guessed it. Here, maroon. Put this down here. That red is kind of really dull, whatever that color is. Oranges I find hard with watercolor as well. I know I've used this, but let me just put it somewhere on its own. To me that's more of a yellow orange. I like an orangey orange. What's the next one? This one's, um, oh, this one's scarlet. Cadmium scarlet. That's more of an orange I like. Maybe somewhere halfway between those. Well, let's just paint it to the top of the page. This is so random. How did this become my whole swatch? <laughs> this one's called Aurelion. It's just another one of these yellows. I can't really tell what the difference is. I am mixing them together too, so it's not like... I'm not being super serious about it. What's this? Cobalt Violet. I've used that one. Imperial Violet. Blue-Grey Deep. Oh, I love Payne's Blue-Grey, so... Probably like that. Hmm... This lilac, I want to use this. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna have to give her a new face or something once this is all said and done. Because <laughs> she just looks... She looks like she's just put on way too much makeup and I'm not living for it. Hmm, I really like this lilac colour. Even when it gets a little muddy, it looks a nice, like, dusty violet. It's curish. Oh, I don't think I'm going to test any more because I won't have any more space. This is called bluish gold and that's called gold. I think I have one of these. I think I have this gold. Kind of works like everything else. I might want to get a bit of pencil on top of this, because if it is made with that animal glue, it might have a different texture to draw over the top of. It's looking like it dries down pretty matte. Um, I think if you lay it down thick, it would kind of have this glossy look to it, like it does when it dries in the pan really thick. It's generally a good indicator of what something will do when it gets really thick. Like if you've ever seen a, a watercolour kind of crack in here, just know that if you put it down really thick on the page, it's not going to be super flexible and it will probably crack as well. It happens a lot with gouache. There's just a lot of pigment in it and it just sits and crumbles off. This is called white gold. Is it iridescent? I just like, it's like a silver. It's like a really finely milled silver, so it almost looks kind of white. It's pretty. I'm not going to do these colors down here. I lie. I'm gonna do white. Let's see if that is opaque. Well, it's kind of opaque. Could be nice for highlights. I don't think it's necessary though. This is gonna do very well for what I wanted it for. Um, and I think just in general too, it actually looks really pretty. Not this. <laughs> These. This area here kind of got away from everybody. But yeah, I'm really happy with that. What else? I've got eight minutes left on my my little stopwatch over here. Let me dry this. If you have these paints, let me know if you uh, feel like you got your money's worth with them. I 
I don't think they're a replacement for my watercolour, but they're definitely an addition to, and I think they serve a really nice purpose for having something that is in one place that can be used for quick colouring. It doesn't even have to be quick. But lots of colour washes, like if I don't want to deal with all of the, the crazy kind of wild nature of all these watercolours that are formulated differently, that have different um, properties and, and fantastic features to them, if I just want like a standard colouring set of water activated pigments, this is what I feel like I would gravitate towards for something simple. Let me try and put some pencil over the top. I might use, I mean, this is kind of unfair because these Holbein pencils go over the top of everything. Seems like it would work just like anything else. Let me see. I mean, even the Polychromos, the Faber Castell, they're such an expensive oil based pencil, I couldn't imagine they wouldn't work. Even over something a bit glossy, I'm sure they'd still work very well. I mean, I know they do. I've tried them before. The Holbein, though, they really go over anything. These are the Holbein Artist Coloured Pencil. I got a whole pastel set of 50 from Japan. It took me ages to crack into them. Don't know why, because I've... They've become very useful ever since. They're all pastel colours in such unique shades that I feel like coming super handy for all my whimsical illustration. Okay. I don't need to shade that. It works with the pencil, that's all I need to know. I'm sure it'll work with a pen too, but just in case, I got some new pens as well, the Unipin Fine Line. Yeah, it's great. It works. Well, maybe I'll just put her face on with this and it'll kind of cancel out that pencil. This is really nice and um, juicy, this pen. I guess I've been I've been using my pens so that they really dry up so I can uh, kind of go through everything and resort out my stash. I've kind of forgotten what it's like to use a nice, <laughs> juicy, felt-tip pen. It's also a size 8, so it's, I'm sure that has something to do with it. There we go. Oh, do you know what? Maybe I could just keep working on that and I don't even need to cover it up. I was going to cover this up, no lie. But I don't think I will anymore. I'm just going to dab up some of this. What was I saying? Yeah, I think these will work for me. I think, oh, I think they'll absolutely work. Let me check I'm in frame. There we go. Sorry if I've been moving out of frame that whole time. This has kind of been a super random video. But I think such is the nature with YouTube, right? Hit and miss. <laughs> I just, um, this is exactly what I wanted to do. I, I kept thinking of other things I could do, but this is what I wanted to do. And then I remembered my YouTube channel is here to do what I want to do. So, do it. Hopefully, I've been some company for you. Or accidentally answered a question you might have had. These are my picks, I think. I'm just swatching them out so you can see them. That purple I've just laid over the purple anyway, so... If you would like to know which colours I'm loving, I think that's it. Or did I... was there another one too? It was Turquoise Green Deep. It was this one, right? Yes, this one's beautiful. Oh, that's so pretty. It's so vibrant. I think it dries down a touch um, less vibrant, but still. Alright, so my faves, I'm going to write them down so I don't forget. But I will forget, so. Pointless, really. This one is Lilac. It's number 13, so I'll put the number 2. 13, Lilac. 50 Malachite, 50 M A L A C H I T E. Uh, this one was Horizon Blue 69. 
Horizon Blue, super pretty. And then 61 was Ultramarine Pale. 61 Ultra Marine Pale. I like that. It's kind of like a periwinkle. This pink, Cherry Blossom Pink, number 14. Cherry Blossom Pink. And this one is number 57, the Spread Eagle. That's not it. <laughs> 57, Turquoise Green Deep. And these are the Kuretake Gunzai Tambi 48 color set. Yeah, I didn't even swatch them all out, but I do know that I love those. So, if not that that means anything, but. <laughs> If you're, um, if you're curious, I might end up swatching this out, actually, because I'm curious. Do you want to watch that? If that's not interesting to you, I'm sure you would have left by now anyway, so that's fine. I won't be offended. <laughs> I'm just going to quickly swatch them out and see what all these colors look like. Okay. This one. Rose Matter Deep. Ooh. Kind of like a berry red. Carmine, it's the same, it's kind of pinky. I've got two jars of water over there just so I can get a nice clean brush. Rose Matter, this is a very transparent uh, red pink. This one's just called Red. I like it. Looks like a lipstick red. Next one, Cadmium Red. Kind of looks a, like it looks like if the lipstick red was like chalky, but these will all look a little different once they're dry. Cadmium scarlet, it's orangey. I like that. Cadmium orange, it's nice. Cadmium yellow. Aurelion, what a fabulous name. Who am I? I never do these swatch charts. <laughs> Certainly don't usually do them on, um, on YouTube. That's lemon yellow, that's really pretty. That's Steve's yellow. Steve's last name is Spanish for lemons. Oh, okay, stop. So we've officially run out of time, but I'm gonna swatch these out and just kind of give you my opinions of these. Um, that says greenish yellow, and it would be spot on because that's I can't tell what that is. I have a bit of a color blind, color blind, <laughs> color blind problem in the green and yellow spectrum. Olive green looks good. Lime green, Let's see that looks yellow to me. I don't know. It looks like a tennis ball. Sap green light. It's nice, looks like a grassy green. And this is the regular sap green. It's a little bit more natural looking, the other one's a bit more vibrant. Hookah's green. Oh wow, I'm assuming that's not very transparent. Sap green deep. Okay. The next one is forest green. I don't think we swatched this one out. Oh, that's nice. That looks like what I would call Viridian, but this, there is a Viridian in this, so we'll see what that looks like. This is the turquoise green deep. Looks more blue to me, but it's so pretty. This is Viridian. Hmm. Yep, sure. <laughs> I mean, I've learned my colors from other watercolor sets, so it just, I mean, there's gonna be differences. This is the one I like, and the one that I bought this set for. I don't think you need to buy the whole set for it, but I figured go big or go home. That's Malachite. Horizon Blue, such a bonus that this color is in there because 
I do like a baby blue. Ultramarine pale, I really like that. To me it gives me a bit of, um, a bit bluier of the Daniel Smith lavender. And this one is Wisteria, which is giving me a, Lilac is giving me kind of Wisteria replacement vibes. Not totally, but maybe. Sorry, I've gone into my other thing now. Okay, blood it up. And then this is turquoise blue. Ooh, I need some water. Okay. That turquoise green deep is my favorite turquoise. And I guess now it does look more green over there compared to this turquoise blue. This is a nice electric looking blue. Cerulean. I think it was a collection of cerulean jackets, wasn't it? <laughs> I think we need a jacket here. Cerulean blue we love, for quoting purposes. Color itself I'm not too fond of. I find it hard to re-wet in the pan. Cobalt blue, also not one that I'm super fond of. I only like it when it granulates. Those two look exactly the same to me, but I think they'll dry different. Ultramarine? Uh, I prefer French ultramarine, but that's fine. <laughs> There's like literally no difference. Um, Prussian blue, oh that's nice, that's strong. That's more of that like royal blue. Indigo, nice. Every time I look at indigo, I think of calling it um, Midnight Ink. I don't know why, I've just always thought that would be a pretty name for indigo. It probably already exists, but... It's just what I think. Blue, grey, deep. Looks like a darker version of that Daniel Smith Payne's blue, grey. Imperial Violet. Oh, wow, that is purple, purple. Oh, that's pretty. Maybe I should add imp... I never use violets like that, but... I used it on that top, it just, this, this looks much nicer on this paper. Maybe I didn't use enough over there. It is still wet, it'll probably dry down a little lighter. Um, paper also, like the sizing in paper, does affect how colour uh, looks, your watercolour, or your water activated pigments. Um, the sizing in the paper will react, because it's the chemicals in the binders and the chemicals in the papers. They do have a little moment where they talk to each other and decide what they want to look like. So, don't just assume that all paper is made equal. <laughs> Some of it is definitely not. That was purple, looks pink to me. Lilac, looking a little dusty down here, but um, we do love it. It's that light um, wisteria looking colour. The Daniel Smith one. Cherry Blossom Pink is um, kind of, it's, it is a baby pink, but it's more of a um, deeper baby pink. I think I would have preferred it a little lighter. This is the Gekoso, the, um, they call this something really random, like a, a yellow or something, but I like this baby pink, it's a little lighter. It's fine though, this will work. This one's called Rose Beige. It's pretty, oh, I've accidentally mixed it into the wrong one. Yeah, so your paper will affect what the colour looks like. Not drastically, but I've even noticed from, like, just signatures that I've used before where the paper is different within the signature and suddenly the watercolour starts looking a little different, like the tint starts to look a, a little bit different. Natural beige, that's more of a yellow, a yellow-based beige. This one is more of a pink-based beige. Yellow ochre is giving you what yellow ochre gives you. This is burnt sienna. Sienna without sunscreen on. Looks nice. Maroon. Oh wow, this looks a lot more um, maroon on here. Or maroon as I would probably say, but I think it is maroon. Yeah, this is giving me more maroon than I thought. Indian red, down here. Yeah, Indian red has that, it has that slight look of it being like a little milky. Raw umber deep. That's like a deep, um, dark, 
brown. I'd be surprised to see if that granulates because it looks a little gritty. Black. Oh, nice and black. It looks like the base of that black is... Do I have another piece of watercolor paper? I don't think I have one. I don't know what the base of this color is. Maybe I'll see if it... It looks like it's a, a blue-based black. Like it's a cool tone kind of a black. I prefer the cool tone blacks. But I'm, I'm fine either way. Gray. That just looks like a gray. I can't tell if it's warm or cold. It might just be a neutral. There's no real point to swatching out the white, but there's the white. <laughs> then here are the, uh, the special ones. This is the white gold. So you can see there's no base to that. I'm assuming you could mix it into any of these and have kind of a shimmery version of it. Bluish gold is that very antique looking. Oh wow, look, that's repelling it away. I accidentally got it in there. They do not want to be together. How funny. Um, this is more that antique looking gold. And this gold is not. It's more of a penny color. So I guess kind of coppery. But I actually like the look of both of those. They're not so bright. I don't really like yellow, yellow gold. All right. That is the Kudetake Ganzai Tambi color chart for the 48. I'm sorry if you had to sit through that and you didn't want to, um, <laughs> but those are my first impressions of the colors. And I'm still kind of sticking true to what I said I liked before these uh, colors. I will add probably that Cobalt Violet looks really nice on this. Maybe I was not giving that a run for its money. The purple looked great when it was wet, but now that it's drying down, Cobalt Violet looks pretty good and this turquoise blue is looking a little more appealing so yeah hopefully that helps if that's something you're interested in those shimmery things down the bottom that white gold is actually pretty shimmery I wouldn't mind adding that to something and mixing it together apparently um, because of the animal glues used in this paint in the binder you don't really want to be mixing too many of these together or it doesn't mix the same way a conventional watercolor would mix but you know I'm gonna try it and you know I will find a workaround if I need to. <laughs> so I think that's the beauty of being mixed media artists, right? I mean, art supplies, we love all of them. Um, you know, spending more money doesn't necessarily mean getting more out of it. Um, sometimes I have really beautifully expensive things, but I tend to prefer things that are cheaper. Case in point, I have many, many, many beautiful pencils, but I don't really have cheap, I don't really have like an expensive version of a cheap HB pencil. So I end up using, like, just random ones. This one's not actually that cheap, but... <laughs> wow. Pulls out the one example that I, I don't have here. Like one of these character pencils from Disney, I, I tend to use these as well, just because they create a very light uh, pencil stroke, and I can erase it really easily. A lot of this graphite that lays down from a Palomino Blackwing, it's a soft lead, it will um, smudge everywhere, or I have to erase really hard to get rid of it all. So yeah, sometimes it's not about spending more money, it's just finding what works for you, and I think that's why we always just say experiment, experiment, experiment. And if you like what someone accomplished with, with their experimentation, then um, yeah, be sure to find out if there was any trick to it so that you can accomplish the same thing. So there you go, not really a review, but a nice little playtime. Here's my mermaid. I think I will cover her up, I don't know. <laughs> I'm in two minds. <laughs> um, either way, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not upset about it. I got my practice in. I'm happy with these paints and I will put them to good use. Don't you worry about that. Thanks for joining me on YouTube today. I'm going to get myself set up for Art Journaling the Magic later today. And I will see you again really soon. Bye.